Hey everybody, I've got a, a lanai off of my back uh, master bedroom. Uh, it's attached to the pool area as well. It's got a screen on the top. Um, and I used to have an old umbrella. It was getting kind of ratty looking, so I got rid of it uh, to keep the sun and the rain off. I sit at the little table. Um, and I got rid of the umbrella. And the problem with the umbrella was it was shedding water around the perimeter, which was getting water up against the house. You can see I've done some caulking. I got some touch-up painting to do. Uh, but long story short, I uh, decided to try a shade sail. And I hunted and pecked around. Most of them are not waterproof, by the way. And I'm in Florida. We get a lot of rain. And so I, I did find uh, one that was waterproof. And I'll put a link in the description for all the stuff I'm going to show you to make it easy for you. And I'm also going to show you how I wound up attaching the shade sail. Um, when you go to purchase them, one of the things that they offer up is uh, turn, uh, a set of turnbuckles and so on. Um, I tried that and it didn't really work out and I found something that's really uh, a great idea and it's that black hook right there and I've got one this is a rectangular one but I've got one in each corner um, and the way you set these things up by the way is uh, for a rectangular one anyway, you'll have two corners will be high and one corner will be lower and then the final corner will be lower than that. And what you're doing is you're trying to get the, uh, uh, the runoff for the rain to go off where you want it to go off because it can shed quite a bit of water. This one is eight feet by 14 feet. So it's a lot of surface area, and I don't know if you can tell, but the uh, it has like a belly in it, and that's normal. It's essentially you're creating a trough for the water to run where you want it to run. And I've got an area, I'm going to do a separate little video on what I got going here. Uh, there's a little planter uh, in the corner. And that, in the big rains that we get, that tends to flood, uh, and it, it does kind of flood the, the porch area. So I'm doing something to see if I can't deal with the, the runoff that, that's happening there. Uh, but I want to take a second and show you how these things are attached and what you need to get. And I'll put uh, links in the description for you if that's helpful. And also something to be aware of. For instance, this rec rectangular one is not perfectly rectangular. Um, if you look down the edge of it, it has a curve and all sides are curved that way. Uh, just so you know, it's not perfectly rectangular. Um, and you do want to install, for instance, this is eight feet wide you want to install your anchor points further out than the eight feet and you want to do that on each side and that's probably uh, that's probably eight to ten inches further than that corner and the other corner we'll walk over here and show you that's the same way and then at the other end I've attached to the screen cage and these attachments were into the wood with eye screws on each end there and then it's got eye bolts on each end there where I've drilled through the aluminum screen cage and ran the bolt through and put the nut on the other side put a washer and a nut but let me just show you the uh, contraptions that I used uh, instead of doing the, the turnbuckles because it really made it a lot easier. Okay, each corner of your shade sail is going to have a metal loop 
that's sewn into it. Mine has four because it's rectangular. Some of them have three because they're triangular. From that point, we go to the clip. Those operate like that, all right? So that goes right through there, clips in. From there, we've got rope. I've got 3 8 inch nylon rope. I've just tied a good old fashioned knot. I don't know how to do fancy knots and this suffices. So that's good for there. From here, we go up to this. And this is what, what's so helpful and works so well. Um, because the way it operates is you get to uh, grab a hold of the rope, you put tension on it, pull it, release it. And those teeth right there, this closes down automatically. It's spring loaded and it closes down so that that rope stays taut because that's what you're going to want is good tension uh, at each attachment point of your shade sail. I'm not going to put the link to uh, eye bolts and eye screws. I've got bolts on this end, like I said, uh, and eye screws on the other end because I don't know what you're going to be attaching to. So we'll just leave you to your own devices there. And those that may be wondering why I've got electrical tape wrapped around each end, uh, I'll show you. You might need uh, rope cutting class and that's okay. Uh, some of you don't know that that stuff frays very badly, very quickly when you cut it. Uh, so I'll show you real quick how to do that. Okay, rope cutting class. Um, and this probably is going to go out more to you younger people. Um, I'm an old man, and, and my, my, I think it was my grandfather taught me this uh, when I was about ready to tear my hair out. <laughs> I was doing something with rope, but anyway, uh, what we would do is we would take, most of us, take a pair of scissors, and we would cut the rope, and you think everything's all good and well, and then we find out we got, we got an unraveling mess on our hands, and really the trick to it is all we do is we take electrical tape, and we want to wrap around the end or it's not quite the end but and we want to go around okay here we go we want to go around this is probably i don't know three four times something like that and then we will break it off electrical tape that's how you break it off uh, and then finish wrapping it then we can come back and I'm using scissors, but you could use a sharp knife and put a piece of wood under it. But uh, uh, scissors do kind of tend to flatten out the rope when you're cutting through it, which makes it something of a pain. But then all we do is we take a, a get that out of the way, uh, take a lighter and we just want to melt the rope like that so it can't uh, fray anymore and at that point you can pull the uh, electrical tape off of there if you want I just leave it on there uh, just depending on the project but anyway uh, that's how it's done like I said my grandfather I think it was taught me and uh, uh, so some of you young folks may not know how to do that, and I thought I'd, I'd show it to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.